So grit is the only common indicator for success. Um, it's a combination of self-control, resilience, and perseverance. Um, at higher ground, um, it's a place of transformation for the youth. It's a place where they get launched using um, systems that will help them develop grit. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jansen Azarius, and welcome to Higher Ground, a youth development center. No, I'm not one of the high school students we serve, but I'm here to talk about them. See, when I first came to the United States, I was 18 years old, and I came here because I had a dream. And I was told in the Philippines that this was the promised land, that this is where you made your dreams come true. But the first time I met a youth, I was co painted a completely different picture. See, I'm going to introduce you today to John. When I first met John, he was 15 years old, and he had already been to three drug rehabs. He's already in a gang, and he had already dropped out of school. See, instead of a promised land, to him, this was a place of hopelessness, trauma, disengagement, and a lack of passion. I began to wonder just what is really going on with our youth. Why is there such a disengagement? Well, I found out that 80% of their waking hours is spent out of school. See, that totals to about 4,672 hours each year where our kids are not necessarily engaged unless they're part of an after-school program or they're being developed that way. So let's really find out how many of our kids are actually being engaged during that 80% of their time. Well, if they're not being engaged, let me tell you what they're doing. They're home alone. And if they're home alone, they're spent in front of the television. That's about 10,000 murders that they've witnessed, 4,000 rapes, and about 2,000 instances of domestic violence by the time they're 18. Now, if they're not home alone, they're getting into trouble. There's a lot of research that says the hours of 3 to 6 p.m. is when juvenile criminal activity spikes up. See, how many of our kids are actually doing these two things? Well, there's about 56 million children in the United States education system. About a million of those are located right here in Arizona. And out of those million students in Arizona, 858,000 of them have nowhere to go after school. Not doing anything with 80% of their time. And about 23,000 of those are our neighbors, located within a five mile radius of South Tucson. See, what does this really translate to? Well, today, right now, there's a thousand of our future, our youth, in jail, just here in Arizona. And see, 25% of our million students last year dropped out. That translates to 18,000 students last year, just in Arizona alone, that has dropped out of our school system. What does this really cost us, the so-called trouble? Well, it's costing us about $7.5 billion per year as taxpayers, and that's just in Arizona alone. See, what happens is when a youth drops out, they're eight times more likely to get incarcerated, which then results to about $70,000 to $100,000 a year per child that goes to our jail. See, and even if they do not go to jail, it will cost our community about $1.5 million per youth if they do not continue with their education. See, what about our kids who are doing well, who are being developed during those 80% time? Well, it affects them too. See, they will be set in about 10, 15 years with a lack of labor force, in a high crime community, and in return, nobody wants to raise their family in those kind of situations. So, enter higher ground. We are the solution. See, we're not your typical after school program. It's not just about keeping them busy with programs. We are here to look at a complete picture of a child. See, today I'm going to take you step by step what every student at higher ground experiences when they go to higher ground. Remember John Paul? See, when John first came to higher ground, not only did we find out about the drugs, the, the alcohol, the gang, and all those things, we also found out about his family. We also looked at his trauma, but more importantly, we found out who he is. We built a relationship with him, found out his personality. And then after that, we looked at the whole community. Who's around John? Who's helping John? Who can help John? Because it's not just about higher ground. It's about the other people around him and utilizing them. 
See, and then we create family buy-in and partnerships. And from that, we create a complete roadmap to success because we're able to predict the gaps and we're able to help John develop his own system to deal with them. What does this really mean for John? Well, it means transformation. See, John, as of right now, is the first in his entire family to graduate out of high school. But more importantly, he had a full college scholarship to Pima Community College, and right now he's studying for social work so that he can pay it forward. See, that's the kind of transformation we're talking about. And then what does this mean for the rest of our students? Well, last year, 83% of them learned skills for community contribution, 90% of them improved their grades, and 100% of them increased their confidence. More importantly, we found that 65% of our students learned emotional control, and 81% developed grit. Why is this so important? Well, these are the two traits that can predict success in life, and that's a common research that's going on right now. So if we can develop grit and self-control in our future, we can be guaranteed that whatever pursuit they have, they can succeed. See, we've been doing this for the past seven years. We've served about 1,500 students, and we've been um, awarded through a partnership with our school district, a 100,000 square feet campus for a dollar a year. And with a partnership with United Way and Youth on the Rise, we were selected as the first location for the National Reengagement Center here in Tucson. See, and how do we scale this? Just how do we impact more youth? Well, Ken Bedell of the Department of Education said something powerful. He said that we are a simple system that can be duplicated anywhere. And that's exactly what we intend to show you today. See, first, we want to develop this system, this mapping that we've done, and start teaching other organizations here in Tucson. And after that, start going after other organizations in Arizona. And then on the year three, we want to start an adoption of standards of practice so that youth development in Arizona will become transformed. No longer will it be about just creating a safe place, but more than just a safe place, it will be about utilizing that 80% to bridge the gap. See, we will do that by an online training program. And then on the second year, we will begin to expand that and begin to license our mapping system. And then finally, once there are standards of practice, we'll go after federal funding so that we can create more training and evaluation so we can constantly improve what we're doing with our youth. See, currently, we already have several customers that have asked for this kind of training and for our mapping. Now, between my team, our team, we have about 40 years of child and family development, and also with the backing of big organizations like United Way and La Frontera, we can ensure that our youth development methods will constantly be updated and constantly be relevant to the growing needs of our community. So how can you be a part of this? How can you invest in our future, our youth? Well, first, we need seed funding for our expansion. We need to be able to reach more youth, and we need your help. We also need you to introduce us to other people in the community who is interested in improving our current systems for our youth. And finally, come visit us. We're located right at Wakefield, and you can see how life is transformed, how one child can be transformed through this system. You can see our website at higherground.me, or you can contact me directly. And let us reach a higher ground together for our youth. Thank you so much for your time.